why there's so much
Lord be with you. And also with you. A couple of brief announcements before we begin. At the end of the service, we will exit through these doors. Those who have called ahead and reserved a spot during the luncheon, you are welcome to continue down the stairs and go into the common meeting area downstairs, and the rest are welcome to slip out those back doors. You don't have to walk through the whole building again. Um, I think that's all I had to announce. God's richest blessings on your worship will be following divine service. Setting three is found on page 184. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord. Let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgive me. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called, ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the psalm as printed in the bulletin. Sir, the Lord with gladness, come into his presence with singing. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Sir, the Lord with It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. And to his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Serve the Lord with gladness, come into his presence with singing. We be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy
with you. Let us pray. <coughs> Almighty and gracious God, we give you thanks for raising up among us faithful servants for the ministry of your word and sacrament through which you nurture us in your truth and feed us with the holy food of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. United through him in the fellowship of your Holy Spirit, we praise you on this day for your servant, Pastor Jack Hetzel. Grant that he may continue to follow in word and deed an example of your Son, and that together we may serve you now in the church on earth and evermore praise you in the kingdom of heaven. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Old Testament reading from Jeremiah 15. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you return, I will restore you, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall be as my mouth. They shall turn to you, but you shall not turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, declares the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The epistle reading from 2 Corinthians 3. Such is the confidence that we have through Christ toward God. Not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything as coming from us. But our sufficiency is from God, who has made us sufficient to be ministers of a new covenant. Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Now, if the ministry of death carved in letters on stone came with such glory that the Israelites could not gaze at Moses' face because of its glory, which was being brought to an end, will not the ministry of the Spirit have even more glory? It, for if there was glory in the ministry of condemnation, the ministry of righteousness must far exceed it in glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter, beginning at the 19th verse. Glory be to thee, o Lord. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee. We confess together our common faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten of not made being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures. Ascended in heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory, judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead. And I the world to come. Amen. Please be seated.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is the gospel lesson read a few moments ago. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. That never gets old, no matter how old the child of God gets. The joy, the excitement, that shout of victory, it stays with us, especially in this Easter season of the church year. There are times and events and days that fill us with joy and anticipation. I think of a young couple standing before the altar of the Lord on their wedding day, family and friends all gathered around, the couple gazing deeply into each other's eyes. I wonder if they're listening to anything the pastor says. How many times I've asked for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health, and I look at them and they say, yes, I do. And I wonder, but do you know what you're really saying? Do you really understand how bad, how worse, how sick things can be? How poor you might be? No, we always go to the other end of the scale. It's going to be good, rich, wealthy, healthy, and wise, wonderful. Why, look who I'm with. And we're so excited, filled with joy and anticipation. The pastor pronounces them husband and wife, and they look at each other with such love in their eyes. Sometimes at that moment, I've thought to myself, they should be saying, now what? Now what are we to do? Now that we're husband and wife, now that we're married, what does this mean? Down the road a few years, the young couple's in the delivery room. After waiting in anxious expectation for months, the day has finally arrived. Suddenly they hear it, the cries of their first child, a beautiful newborn baby girl. The nurse takes their daughter, checks her out, wraps her up, gives her back to mom and says to the others in the room, now let's go and leave mom and the new mom and dad alone so they can have some family time. Everybody leaves. The new mom, the new dad look at each other. They look at their baby girl. We're parents. <laughs> now what? The baby cries and squirms and perhaps spits up. Now what? The nurse didn't tell us what to do. Well, as people of God, we as children of God look to the word of God for instruction on how to live as his children. We look to Holy Scripture to learn about marriage from the one who instituted marriage. Do you remember that? Well, of course you do. You better or go back to confirmation. Adam was alone. Things were not good. Well, everything was good around him and right and wonderful, but Adam was alone. So the Lord God took a rib from Adam and made a helpmate. He put Adam into a deep sleep. Now you can imagine, Adam goes to sleep alone. He watches all the other animals frolicking about with their mates. He's alone. Suddenly the Lord wakes him. He rubs the, e, the, the sleep from his eyes as he looks at Eve coming toward him and he goes, Oh, a blonde. I was hoping for a redhead. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't think Adam would have said that. I think Adam would have been overjoyed at the thought of seeing another human being. A gift from God, just what he needed. One to be with him and walk with him and share with him this wonderful garden paradise together. He was not thinking of wanting anyone else than the gift the Lord God had given him. Think about that when you look at your new pastor. The young couple standing before the altar of the Lord learns from the Holy Word of God how to love and respect each other, how to care for each other, how to put the other person first, how to care more about the needs and wants of their spouse than their own. They learn from God how to forgive when forgiveness is needed and how to confess when confession is needed. The new parents look to the Word of God and how to raise their children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, how to train them up so that they will not veer from it in their old age. The importance of bringing that child to the house of the Lord, to hear the Word of God, what it means to be a child of God, and all that Christ has done for them. He is risen! He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. There are days as well in the life of the church that are filled with joy and excitement. Think of a baptism, 
How the whole family, the family of faith, gathers around the birth of this newborn child in the faith, forgiven by the Lord himself, washed in the waters of holy baptism, and given saving faith. It is indeed joyful beyond all measure. Then comes the time when the child grows and kneels down and for the first time takes the body and blood of his Lord Christ into his own, that his sins be forgiven, his faith strengthened, and the unity among the people of God reinforced. And there's joy when a pastor comes to see one in hospital, the joy of receiving Holy Communion just before heading into surgery, a surgery which they may not survive. I have seen that many times in my ministry, the deep joy and wondrous awe in the face and on the lips of those people receiving the Lord's body and blood just before one of those surgeries. The joy and peace is there amidst the apprehension of what is to come, amidst the anxiety and uncertainty of what might be. Today is one of those days in the life of the church. In the church today, we install your new pastor. And as we do, we would be well to ask, what does this mean? We would be well to say, now what? I'm sure Pastor Hetzel, when he received information that he was called to St. Peter's, whether out loud or just in his head, said, now what? And when he told his congregation, your brothers and sisters at Grace Oshawa about the call, no doubt many of them turned to each other in the pew and said, now what? Even more so when he announced his acceptance and his family as well. Now what? What does this mean? Well, for the pastor and for Lisa, it means sacrifice. It means moving away from family, from children and grandchildren. It means now between them and their family, there is this great mass of people and buildings and traffic that we affectionately call Toronto. <laughs> now they either have to find a way through it or around it. What does installation mean for the pastor? Well, for the pastor, it is a time that is bittersweet. You see, after serving saints for so long in one place, baptizing their babies, confirming them, marrying them, being with their loved ones, sitting next to them in hospital, bringing Holy Communion to them, spending time with those in nursing home, ministering to families of those he laid to rest. Leaving is not easy. The pastor has feelings. He's not a robot. He has flesh and blood and emotion and mind, and he cares for his people. And so today is bittersweet for Pastor Hetzel. It's bitter because he remembers those saints in Grace Oshawa that he was caring for, that he was working with, that he was so lovingly shepherding through the turmoils of this life. And yet today, means a day of sweetness and great joy and anticipation of what will be here in this place as he shepherds the saints here and cares for the saints here and baptizes and holds their hand in hospital as he brings Holy Communion to those who cannot leave their bed. It is sweet joy that he can be the Lord's hands and mouths to stand in the stead and by the command of his Lord to forgive his people and shepherd his flock. Yeah, today means sacrifice for your pastor. So be a little patient with him. He's only human. Give him time to mourn and grieve a little what he's left behind, even as he rejoices with those he's come to serve. After all, he is a man, flesh and blood and feelings, and you would not want anything less in a pastor. The installation of your pastor, what does it mean for the family? Well, it means mom and dad have moved away. Not too far but not across town either. It means Oma and Opa are a little farther away now, and that can be bitter. But that bitterness is tempered with the sweetness of the knowledge that this is the Lord's will. And when the Lord asks you to do something, he's with you and strengthens you through it. He doesn't leave you alone. It means now that when you visit Oma and Opa, you can stay for a few days and they can spoil you. You can take in a play at the festival, Go down to the waterfront and watch the swans. Maybe even rent a canoe and go out amongst them. For the congregation, you sit here today, you see your new pastor and are thinking, now what? He's our pastor. What does that mean? Well, as people of God, you turn to the word of God to learn from God how he would have his people live.
We see in Holy Scripture, the Lord reminds us that it is he who called and placed this man to be your shepherd. The Lord has divine heavenly gifts for you that he brings to you from the throne of mercy and grace in heaven that you may have forgiveness, that he, you may have saving faith created and nurtured, that he may give you his very, very body and blood so he may prepare you and bestow upon you eternal salvation. And so to bring you these heavenly divine gifts, these life-saving, joyous gifts, the Lord has chosen to do this through a man. One to stand in his stead and by his command to stand among you that Christ may use his mouth and announce to you his holy absolution. And to stand there where the word made flesh reads to you his word through the mouth of his servant. The Lord of the church has chosen a man to stand there and with his hands to baptize and unite himself with the lamb for which he died. To stand here as Christ speaks to you through him. To stand before his altar and use the mouth of his chosen servant to bring the prayers of his people to our heavenly father. To use his hands to take from the altar his very body and blood and place it into the mouths of his people. These divine heavenly gifts come to you from the Lord through his chosen man. That's what installation means. It is Christ shepherding his flock. As my bishop from Vicarage often told me, it is Christ doing it. He just chooses to use you at this time in this place to shepherd his people. But could he, he could easily choose another. The pastor and people must never forget that. It is Christ shepherding his flock. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Such joy and excitement. But that's not what we heard the disciples feel in the upper room that night. Like the disciples, we know well the feeling of anticipation and joy. They watched their rabbi teach with authority. They marveled at how the power of God, he healed the sick and raised the dead and cast out demons. Oh, it was a good time. It was a wonderful time. And as you read Holy Scripture, you see how at times they fought and squabbled. They had their own ideas of what this new Messiah was to be. Are you now at this time going to restore your kingdom and get rid of those blooming Romans? Which of us is the greatest? Who's number one? I think it's me. No, not you, Bartholomew. Jesus can teach and preach and command demons, and we are his disciples. They were so often earthly minded. Jesus had to say to one of them, get behind me, Satan. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of man. You're thinking of this world, but my kingdom is not of this world. <laughs> Such were those disciples. <laughs> what about us? You know, I think it would be really helpful for each congregation to have a 55-gallon drum outside the front door where you enter the church with a big sign on it saying, Before entering, leave all your earthly crap here. All the petty squabbles and bitterness, the fights, the power struggles, leave it all out there. The who's in charge and who's in control and who's better than who, leave it out there. This is what I want, I better get what I want or somebody's going to be in trouble, leave it out there. Hmm, maybe we need more than one barrel. Those things do not have a place in the house of God. Leave all of that type of stuff out there in the broken, sinful, cursed world. In here, you come into the presence of the Holy One. In here, the Holy One comes to you with his heavenly gifts. In here, you stand before God and hear his thundering law to condemn your sin lest you continue to live in your sin and die in your sin and perish eternally in that sin. Here, the powerful word of forgiveness is proclaimed, removing your sins as they are forgiven. Here you are fed with the heavenly food. That's what's important in here. Leave all that earthly stuff out there. Easier said than done. The disciples couldn't do it and they were right there with Jesus. What makes us think we can do it? You know, the only reason to bring those things from that barrel in here 
is to lay them at the foot of the cross in confession and repentance that the Lord Christ, who gave his lifeblood for you, can forgive you. So the disciples had it all going on. The teaching, the preaching, the healing, and then that wonderful Palm Sunday triumphant entry event. They were riding high. But then in the midst of it all, Jesus gets arrested, gets beaten, flogged, has a crown of thorns pounded into his head, blood running down his face. Suddenly their world seems to be crashing down around them. They thought they were on top of the world. Now they have the world of the weight on top of them, the weight of the world on top of them. They killed our rabbi. They twisted and manipulated the Roman government. They crucified Jesus. What will they do to us? So they were in the upper room, hiding behind locked doors for fear of the Jews. They killed Jesus. Now what? What does this mean for us? Are they coming for us? Matthew, double check the door, make sure it's locked. What was that sound? Are they coming? It wasn't joy they felt. It was anxiety, apprehension, fear, terrifying fear. We know those feelings quite well, don't we, you and I? We've had them many times in our life. It is those times when Satan uses those circumstances to whisper in our ear, just like he did in the Garden of Eden. Did God really say, you're going in for surgery? And the doctor said you might not survive. Oh, I thought God loved you. And the father of lies continues spreading his lies into our ears. And the old Adam in us just sucks it right in. And sadly then we give in to doubting and faithfulness, faithlessness and fear and trembling and foreboding. And oh my, now what about me? Church numbers are dwindling. What can I, must I, will I do to save the church? Don't like what your pastor said? Satan whispers, oh, that's just his idea. Don't worry about it. Or Satan convinces the pastor and people that they must do something new and different. Oh, that word and sacrament stuff was fine years ago, but <laughs> we know better today. The father of lies has been lying from the beginning and has not stopped in 2024. In the midst of this turmoil and fear and temptation, the Lord has a way of putting things into perspective. The risen Lord comes and stands among them, and what does he say? Peace be unto you. Jesus pronounced peace, but more than just pronouncing it. You see, when God speaks, his word does what it says. Think back to creation. Let there be light, and there was light. It wasn't, let there be light, and, uh, okay, now let's get 16 engineers and five physicists together and figure this thing out, and, oh, we should get some focus groups to see what kind of light they want, how bright they want it, how long they want it to be light before it's dark. No, let there be light, and there was light. The Lord made just the right amount of light that his creation needed. He always knows what's best for us. We would do well to remember that at those times Satan whispers differently. Jesus comes into that upper room filled with fear and tension. He says, peace be unto you. His word gives what it says, and they have peace. In the same way, when Jesus says to you, your sins are forgiven, those words carry the power to do what they say. So when your pastor, in the stand and by the command of the Lord Jesus Christ, speaks that word to you, it does what it says. The Lord Christ comes to you here through his word, and it does not return to him void. When Jesus said, this is my body, this is my blood, what does that mean? It is his body, it is his blood, given and shed for you. Today your new pastor is installed. What does this mean? It means the Lord Christ, who gave his life for you, shepherds you through his chosen servant. It means he is true to his word and will not leave you as sheep without a shepherd. So now what? Learn from Holy Scripture. Jesus says, this man stands in his stead. Receive him as you would Christ. Love him as you would Christ. Listen to him, not as a man, but as Christ speaking through this man. Rejoice that Jesus has so chosen to shepherd and care for you, to feed and nourish you, and that he who knows what is best for you has chosen at this time, in this place, to send this man to care for you through him. And you, dear brother, what does today mean 
for you. Jesus says to you, I have chosen you for this place at this time to care for these, my people. Love them as I do. Correct their sins as I do. Grant forgiveness as I do. Stand there and forgive them. Stand there and I will use your hands and mouths to baptize them. Stand there and I will use your mouth to read my holy word. Stand here and I will proclaim that word through you. Stand there and carry the prayers of your people to our Father and I will pray for them. I will take your hand and take from the altar my body and blood and give it to my sheep. A humbling, awesome task. But he doesn't leave you alone in this task. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. The Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son and is poured out upon God's people to equip and empower them to do his will. Receive the Holy Spirit. His word has the power to do what it says. The Holy Spirit is poured out from the risen Lord Christ upon his people. And so we are called, gathered, and enlightened. We believe because of his power. He goes out with us into that broken, sinful, cursed world in need of a Savior so we can tell everyone what he has done. We forgive because we know the sweetness of that forgiveness firsthand. Through his Holy Spirit, we can be what he made us, blood-bought, water-washed, word-edified, supper-filled, forgiven children of God, bound for heaven. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which is beyond human understanding, Keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Receive for the collection of the offering.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, to the church's usual order, the Reverend Jack Philip Hetzel has been called by the Lord of the Church to be pastor of St. Peter's Evangelical Lutheran Church in Stratford, Ontario. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your Son, our Savior, you have always given to your church on earth faithful shepherds to guide and feed your flock. Therefore, we pray, make all pastors diligent to preach your holy word and to administer your means of grace and grant your people wisdom to follow in the way that leads to life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Hear what Holy Scripture says concerning the institution of the office of the Holy Ministry. Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, <clears throat> baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Matthew 28. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. John 20. Hear what Holy Scripture says concerning the responsibility of the office of the Holy Ministry. Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. John chapter 21. Jesus said unto them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer, and on the third day rise from the dead and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem, Luke 24. I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. 1 Corinthians 11. Do not neglect the gift you have, which was given you by prophecy, when the council of elders laid their hands on you. Practice these things, Devote yourself to them so that all may see your progress. Keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. Persist in this, for by so doing you will save both yourself and your hearers. 1 Timothy 4. This is how one should regard us, as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required of stewards that they be found trustworthy. 1 Corinthians. Such is the confidence that we have through Christ toward God, not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything as coming from us, but our sufficiency is from God. 2 Corinthians 3. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, 
who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. 2 Corinthians 5. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching, for the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but have itching ears. They will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. 2 Timothy chapter 4. The saying is trustworthy. If anyone aspires to the office of overseer, he desires a noble task. Therefore, an overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not a drunkard, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own household well, with all dignity, keeping his children submissive. For if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he care for God's church? He must not be a recent convert, or he may become puffed up with conceit and fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must be well thought of by outsiders, so that he may not fall into disgrace, into a snare of the devil. 1 Timothy 3. Our Lord gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, to the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Ephesians chapter 4. Take heed to yourself and all the flock, among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. Acts 20. Shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you, not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. 1 Peter chapter 5. Hear what Holy Scripture says concerning the strength and promise God gives to them in the office of the holy ministry. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works, and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Matthew chapter 5. Let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. For it is not the one who commends himself who is approved, but the one whom the Lord commends, 2 Corinthians 10. Continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, 
thoroughly equipped for every good work. 2 Timothy 3. Dear brother in Christ, the Lord grant that you receive and keep these words in your heart so that you may be strengthened and encouraged in your labors. God gathers his church by and around his holy gospel and thereby also grants it growth and increase according to his good pleasure. That this may be done, he has established the office of the holy ministry into which you have been called by the church and have been ordained and consecrated by prayer and the laying on of hands. It is fitting that you should again acknowledge the responsibilities of this office in which you are to serve as pastor of this congregation. In the presence of this congregation and before our Lord, to whom you must give an account now and at the last day, I now ask you, do you acknowledge that the Lord has called you through his church into the ministry of word and sacrament? I do. Do you believe and confess the canonical books of the Old and New Testaments to be the inspired word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and practice? Yes, I believe and confess the canonical scriptures to be the inspired word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and practice. Do you believe and confess the three ecumenical creeds, namely the Apostles, the Nicene, and the Athanasian creeds, as faithful testimonies to the truth of Holy Scripture? And do you reject all the errors which they condemn? Yes, I believe and confess the three ecumenical creeds because they are in accord with the word of God I also reject all the errors they condemn. Do you confess the unaltered Augsburg Confession to be a true exposition of Holy Scripture and a correct exhibition of the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church? And do you confess that the apology of the Augsburg Confession, the small and large catechisms of Martin Luther, the small called articles, the treatise on the power and primacy of the Pope and the formula of Concord, as these are contained in the Book of Concord, are also in agreement with this one scriptural truth? Yes, I make these confessions my own because they are in accord with the word of God. Do you promise that you will perform the duties of your office in accordance with these confessions and that all your preaching and teaching and your administration of the sacraments will be in conformity with Holy Scripture and with these confessions? Yes, I promise with the help of God. Will you faithfully instruct both young and old in the chief articles of Christian doctrine? And will you forgive the sins of those who repent, and will you promise never to divulge the sins confessed to you? Will you minister faithfully to the sick and dying, and will you demonstrate to the church a constant and ready ministry centered in the gospel? Will you admonish and encourage the people to a lively confidence in Christ and in holy living? Yes, I will, with the help of God. Finally, will you honor and adorn the office of the holy ministry with a holy life? Will you be diligent in the study of Holy Scripture and the confessions? And will you be constant in prayer for those under your pastoral care? I will, the Lord helping me through the power and grace of his Holy Spirit. The members of St. Peter's, please rise. Beloved in the Lord, Holy Scripture says obey your leaders and submit to their authority. They keep watch over you as men who must give an account. Obey them so that their work will be a joy and not a burden, for that will be of no advantage to you. You have heard the solemn promise of him called to be your pastor. Will you receive him? Show him that love, honor, and obedience in the Lord that you owe to the shepherd and teacher placed over you by your Lord Jesus Christ. And will you support him by your gifts and pray for him always, that in his labors he may retain a cheerful spirit, and that his ministry among you may be abundantly blessed? If so, then answer, we will with the help of God. We will with the help of God. Will you honor and uphold your pastor as he serves Christ in all his God-pleasing responsibilities? <coughs> will you aid him as he cares for his family? Will you be diligent to put the best construction on everything, recognizing that love covers a multitude of sins? If so, then answer, we will with the help of God. We will with the help of God. The Almighty and most merciful God strengthen and assist you always. Amen. Are you willing and ready to assume this public trust and responsibility? I am. Reverend Jack Philip Hetzel, 
I install you as pastor of St. Peter's Evangelical Lutheran Church, Stratford, Ontario, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now may the God of peace, who again brought from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good, that you may do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We stand for prayer. <laughs> Merciful God and Father, you have graciously promised that through the preaching of the crucified Christ, those who believe in him will be saved. By your Holy Spirit, grant grace to Jack, whom you have given to be pastor of this congregation. Grant him readiness and steadfastness in this ministry, patience, understanding, and great zeal. Support and strengthen him in your service, that by your word your church may be built and increased. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have established your church to be a temple and dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. We give thanks that you continue to provide shepherds to feed and serve your flock in which the Holy Spirit has made them overseers. We humbly implore you ever to strengthen the labors of your ministers, that through their ministry of word and sacrament, your people may increase in your knowledge and service and grow up into him who is the head, even Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Go, therefore, and be a shepherd of the good shepherd's flock. Preach the word, administer the holy sacraments, offer prayer for all the faithful, instruct, watch over, and guide the flock over which the Holy Spirit has placed you. Do it not for earthly gain, but with great joy, for you have been called not to lordship, but to serve his flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. The almighty and most merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Amen.
Most merciful God, you desire everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. Grant that by the preaching of your gospel, we may be given the wisdom that leads to salvation. By the working of your Holy Spirit, keep us attentive to all the teachings of your word. Enlighten our minds, control our wills, and purify our affections. Let your word be a light for our path, that neither the pleasures nor the honors nor the pains of this life may turn away our thoughts from the fullness of life that is found only in you. Enable us in sincerity of heart to follow you, the only true God. By your holy word, enlighten all who are in error, doubt, or temptation with the sure and certain knowledge of your truth that all who live in sin may be led to repentance. Show mercy and grace to all those suffering, any distress, to those who are sick or hospitalized, and to those facing death. Let them know the sure comfort of your holy word. We commit ourselves and all for whom we pray to your fatherly care and benediction. Be gracious to us and defend us by your power. Direct us by your spirit that we may daily grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Savior until we stand before you in the joy of everlasting glory through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. Truly good, right, and salutary, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, her everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus. Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying he has destroyed death, and by his rising again he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Father in heaven, 
Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not in temptation but deliver us from evil. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Which is shed for you, for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.
prophets, bless the prophets, son. Elijah's mantle, or Elijah can. 